Hello, thanks everybody for coming. So my name is Felipe Besson. I work as a data engineer for Get Your Guide. And today I'll be talking about Learn to Rank and Get Your Guide. I call that a logbook because my intention is to cover all phases of the project from day one until the current status of this project. I hope to, it's the last talk, so I hope to talk with some very interesting lessons learned for you. So I would like to start by saying what is Get Your Guide. We are a leading global marketplace for tourism activities. We have currently more than 33,000 activities in our website. Activities can be many things. It can be things that you have to buy a ticket to go to Disneyland, but it can be something from walking tours in Berlin to, I don't know, pirate boats in Cancun. We have those activities in more than 7,000 destinations. We are more than 400 employees, depending on them in our data team, and we are based here in Berlin and Zurich. As a marketplace, uh, any other marketplace, uh, search is very important for us. And we have many search features in our website. We have first a pretty standard one, a full text search. We have in our, in our mobile app, but also in our desktop version. And we are very location driven because we ask for the customers where are, where are they going. And this page has many purposes. The main one may be discovery. From this page, a customer can find places to travel. And as similar to many marketplaces, our ranking here is a composition of business metrics and tax similarity metrics. But we also have something interesting called location pages. Looks like a landing page, but th there's no static content, it, there's search going on here. And this page is also very location driven because those tours, those activities here are about Paris. They all belong to Paris. And dates are even more important here because these activities are popular, so they run out of availability quickly. And we use those pages in our ads. So it means that we paid for the tr this traffic and also we receive high intent customers. We know that all the customers who land this page through an app ad are interested to travel to Paris. And then today we use uh, the, the our ranking here as you don't have matching problems, it's composed mainly, mostly by business metrics. This page is very important for the moment you are in the business, and then you have some problems with this strategy. The focus of business metrics is good in terms of you are showing things that sell well and people want to buy. But we, we, it's very difficult to introduce new products, and new products, let's say, if you are using conversion rate, a new, problem doesn't, new product doesn't have uh, conversions, impressions, and also diversity here is a problem. And we are missing an opportunity. As I mentioned, we use these pages in our ads. So we, we bid for some search keywords on those ads, and we don't use them. So if you bid for this keyword Eiffel Tower ticket and Eiffel Tower restaurant, today we show the, for both cases the same content. So we're missing an opportunity here. So definitely we needed, to, we needed to learn how to rank the activities in these pages. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, for those who don't know uh, Learn to Rank, uh, only a very brief introduction here. If you consider this a search engine, you have documents here. And a pretty standard search system receives a query, and then you have to fetch the documents, and then you will somehow apply some formula here to sort, to order those documents. When we talk about Learn to Rank, we, ha we have a component, the Learn System, that knows from your past data how to rank a, cup of a set of documents for a particular query. So when your query comes in, we know how to, what model you want to use, and then you use this model to rank, by your, uh, to rank the results. So that's the agenda, our, my logbook. I, I go through the scope and decisions that you have to make in this project at Get Your Guide. Some tools and data pipelines we build, the lessons that you learn and are uh, still learning. What's not covered, uh, I won't be covering have statistical modeling and evaluation of the models we are using. The, this will be an overview for a data engineer, in the case me, who works in the project since the beginning and to the current states of the project. So, okay, I would like to start talking about the first iteration. So we had to make some decisions. Our, pro pro uh, our problem is very complex, so we made some decisions and the final scope. Let's recap before why you're doing that to get your guide. We want to apply machine learning in your, your ranking formula on location page to introduce, to introduce uh, text relevance factors. So we currently have there 
many business factors. We want to keep them, maybe add more, but also introduce, introduce relevance factors on this formula. And with this, we will be using our real user intention data and bring some dynamic ranking on landing pages. To achieve this, we define a, a focus. And the focus on this, inter this interaction was points of interest. We have many location pages, uh, and then we have this concept POIs, points of interest. It's something more specific than a, lo than a city or an area. It's something like Eiffel Tower, Louvre Museum, here in Berlin is the TV Tower. So we decided to focus on this vertical. We also have 22 languages in our website, but decided to focus on English to reduce the complexity of the problem. And one important thing here is that on location pages, as I mentioned, we don't have the explicit user query. There is no search box there on the, the, on the user can type and search, but we have the keywords. And we are going to try to apply learn to rank use those keywords. And then an example of keywords that we beat is like this, Eiffel Tower, uh, Start of Liberty Boat Tour. Uh, that is, this is a rich keyword. We have location here, and also some intention for the customer. And then uh, for this view one, we try, we try to be very M MVP. So we follow the basic standard steps of LTR solution, follow what everyone is doing. I will cover these uh, steps during the presentation, but basically we need to collect the judgments, extract features, then have our, tra our training set, training validate, validate our models, run A-B tests, analyze the results, and then find, define the next iteration. Okay, so we start the project. Day one, we need to collect our judgment list. Our judgment list is also a golden set, or is the base for your model to learn. So from this judgment list, we can feature on top of that and have our training set. So we decide to get the highest traffic search keywords. Or, or with this, we have some subset of queries that are very relevant for our business. We have demand for those queries. And then we had a list like this, for we have a search keyword, and, and we decide to have for that keyword, for that location page, in this example, Eiffel Tower, and the keywords Eiffel Tower Summit Access, we want to measure, we want to get some signal here, how relevant, how, what is the relevance, the judgment for this document. So in the second example, uh, we have 24, Paris cooking class for Eiffel Tower, might not be relevant, but we have to collect this somehow. And we also have simple search keywords, keywords without location part, for example. We had in the context of Eiffel Tower, this audio guide, so for those who are familiar with how to structure the, the query, the training set, this is our query ID, the combination of these two factors. This keyword can be used in many other locations, but this keyword for that location page, what is, how relevant is this document? And how did you populate this judgment list? For view one, we decide, we get the easy uh, uh, way, and decide to collect uh, judgments from humans. So we use a human label op labeling approach. The judgments are collected for domain experts, and the experts in this case was internal stakeholders of Get Your Guide. And we ask them to judge from a scale to zero to three, where zero is something that is not relevant at all, and three is uh, something that is very relevant. In this round, we collect about 30,000 judgments. And as we had this judgment, okay, we, we, we think, like we thought, let's analyze the, how good is our ranking. So let's evaluate, based on this judgment, the, the, how good is our rank, your crit rank. And then you apply, uh, we, we label everything, and then you apply NCG at seven, and you got 55%. So, so one more indication, very bad score. Uh, uh, that we need to move forward. There's no more motivation to apply LTR. What is good and bad when and you apply human label agent list? Well, when your data is good, uh, when your data is incomplete or inconsistent, it's not necessarily a case, but this might be a good approach. So, like ask for experts to label your data. What is relevant uh, is too unclear. What I mean here, uh, let's say that you have a commerce and then you want to measure from data if the a document is relevant for a specific query, you can consider clicks. But as, 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 as you know, it's ambiguous. Not, not necessarily a good, uh, good, a good way to measure. Like you, if the user book later, 
that tour might be a good, a good uh, approach for get the relevance. So when it's not clear yet what is the path to achieve the, what is relevant for you, experts can help you to f have the, at least V1. And one interesting thing is that when you get from data, you need to prepare your data, your, your query data. Like you need to apply stemmers, normalize, cluster the data that are similar to see how they behave. Uh, but when you are talking with experts, they know the, they are domain experts, so they know the, the stop words, they know synonymous. So you still need to normalize this thing to collect the judgments, but the, it requires less effort, let's say. And then, but there is also bad things. Relevance is very subjective from to another, of course. And hard to scale, it might be expensive. Okay, we have the judgments. Next step is to enrich those judgments with features. And we went, go f we went for three types of features. We have query document features, business metric features, and document features. What I mean by query document features, pretty standard. We, we are using Elasticsearch, uh, so we collect the PM25 of single text fields that uh, are relevant for our domain. We use multi match combinations like best field, cross field, across those uh, text fields. Business metrics, we decide to include the raw business metrics, but metrics that uh, represent our conversion funnel, let's say. So we include clicks, books, impressions, but also rates like CTR, CR, and document features. In our case, uh, attribute, uh, active attributes like price, the duration, number of reviews, and also categories that uh, the document belongs to. In our case, it might be tickets, tours, walking tours, many things. And then we decide to build a data pipeline. Like we want to be maybe people decide to build a data pipeline. Why is it this? Uh, because is if you consider the LTR cycle, we have three main steps, very, very similar to any machine learning problem. We always can have a new idea of a new feature that you, you want to include and have a training set. And then you, okay, you have a new training set, you have to, mod, to train a model and evaluate. But you can also have an, another feature, so you do that cycle many times. And probably you do many times, you have multiple features. And then when you go through each of these steps, you want something that's reliable. So invest in time, you should build a pipeline. And also something is reproducible. In terms of like last week, if you have a good model for a feature set, you want to have the same results. So it should be reproducible. And if you, if you manage to have le uh, very few human intervention, you can interact faster in this. So you build our first pipeline. Our first pipeline works like this. We receive a judgment list, already populated by the expert. And then you receive a configuration file. When you say the features and the version of the, this, that feature set, you send these things to Databricks. We have a job running on Databricks on top of Spark. And then we, Databricks sends some queries to score features to last search. Uh, but one thing here is like, uh, in this approach, each feature is a query, basically, that you have to send to a search because they are very coupled to the, the actual user query. So we have many requests happening here. And, but the, okay, but we, we managed to collect all these features. We have a training set. We train a validation model. And then we have a model. And then when the user comes, search for a full tower, we had to do it, why do we have to do it? We have to score again your features because they are totally related to the query. And then execute the model. Well, if the model is linear, is it like something simple, it's, it's good. But imagine that it's a complex model here, like a decision tree. We have somehow fetched the documents for a search and reprocess this and then send back to the, to the user. After this first pipeline, we had some problems. Our boat was not safe as we expected. Like we managed the request last search was complicated. We, we had some trials of 300 features at 30,000 uh, rows. We end up nine, with 9 million queries sent to last search. Which, uh, which can batch, we can paralyze, but although it is, it's still 9 million queries. Uh, the version of training set 
it was a problem for us because you have a pipeline, but it was like we recur we needed some human to say, okay, this is the version for this feature set. <coughs> As I mentioned, it's a cute complex model on query time. It's kind of complicated. But then you follow this tool, uh, the LTR plugin, developed by Open Source Connections. Thanks for the initiative. <laughs> uh, we, with this plugin, you can use rank lib and XG boost, uh, a boost, a uh, very standard and good tools for LTR. And with this plugin, it helps us in, in these two main things. Every f uh, with this plugin, you can store and, and features and models inside the Elasticsearch and version them. So when you need to score to collect the judgments now, it's simpler. Because ev as everything is in Elasticsearch, you don't need it to create the queries for your side. You can say, OK, Elasticsearch, score this sample, this pair of uh, query and document using the feature set v1. And then the, the plugin returns for you all the judgments at once. So it's fewer queries to Elasticsearch. So I decided to add this to our, in your pipeline, and then you had this. We receive the judgment, the configuration file, uh, data bricks, and fewer queries now to last search. And you have a training set, and then we train validate our model. At, at this time, we have to just the only this step is manual, uh, it's still, uh, but yet, but we can automate it. We we upload the model, the best model in your last search, and then the user search for Eiffel Tower in this case. We just have to say, OK, use model v1. And the last search knows that model v1, use the feature set v1, and he score for us the results. What is good about our pipeline, we, we, with this, we could iterate faster to get new data sets. Uh, the version of models and feature sets are easier now and some simplicity to run. It's not automated through end to end, but it was good enough for us. OK, so we have a training set. The next steps. Uh, the next step, actually, is to train and validate a model. Let's recap uh, our goals. Uh, we want a reasonable model for location page, for get your guide location page. We want this model to have a mixture of relevance, text relevance metrics, and business metrics. We, we made sure that we have uh, features for covering both uh, metrics. And we decide to have this evaluation metric at NDCG at 10. 10, uh, because this is the size of our location page at, at the moment. Uh, and for the business, for measuring the success, success in, the business per, in the business perspective, we decide to, use, uh, to measure the CTR. And we have some constraints. We are not including uh, user features, like gender, age, uh, from where the user came, such similar so things like that. And you build a pipeline again. Uh, our pipeline now is to train test models. It's simpler than the other one. Where you, you receive here the, the training test set. And you have some model type and configurations. There's also another configuration file. In this view one, we decide to use rank lib. So in this configuration file, we have to receive the model type that we want to try and then the configurations. For example, we can use random forest, so a configuration would be uh, the number of trees, for example. So we receive both things on our mod rank lib model trainer, and then you, you, we, what we did, we distributed rank lib on Spark. So we run this on Spark cluster, the model trains and collect uh, many model execution results. So, OK, and outside Databricks, we have a module here, LTR Model Evaluator, who fetches results in the configuration file and analyzes the output. And, and for that round, for that try, that iteration, uh, returns the best model. So what is good and bad about this pipeline? Uh, you can iterate faster to try new models. And automated models evaluations also optimize it. But the problem here is we had some overhead to distribute rank lib. We shouldn't do that. We could use XG Boost. We went for rank lib at the time because we didn't have expertise in XG Boost and found more documentation and previous experience with rank lib. And one bad thing about rank lib as well that we found in our case was to analyze the feature importance, the output, execution output file from rank lib. And then we have our best V1 model. 
the best model was a lambda march model. It was not a surprise. Like this, uh, three models are like very common and the, maybe the best solutions for those problems. Pretty good NCJ10. And we analyze the features that the model included. It makes totally sense for our business. We have query document features like title, highlights, description, best field mood match with cover well our, our items. We have business metrics like clicks, books, impressions, CR, covers our conversion funnel. And we have document features like number of reviews, review rating, deal price, bestseller, are features that we believe that are good for a customer to take a decision. Okay, we got a model, you just need to run production, right? But not so easy. We did some offline evaluation and didn't go to production. And tell you why. Basically, the best we wanted to work. We, it works for some, some, for some use case, but for our headquarters, let's say, most important search keywords, it didn't work. This example, my favorite example, I thought our skip the line ticket. It's a very important keyword for us. We have here on the left, the current rank. On the right, the rank generated by the model. Let's start to analyze the, the, the new ranks. This first one, Eiffel Tower, second floor, priority access, or some uh, summit ticket. It's very relevant for this query, like priority, priority access and skip the line are synony synonymous. But we can see that this document is not here. It's very bad for, a, I don't know, a location page. The second example, Eiffel Tower dinner with river cruise. Like, to have a dinner, you have to probably be in Eiffel Tower, but didn't mention anything about skip the line. Uh, one last example. Just two, two tours, two activities here. Paris, city tour and skip the line Eiffel Tower ticket. So skip the line Eiffel Tower ticket. But this is not only skip the line Eiffel Tower ticket. So the price is a little bit higher because it's a bundle. It's two things in one. It's a it's relevant result but not sure if, if you need to be ranked so high for this keyword as you have high intended customers, that customers search for only this, not sure if this is relevant for the customers and the, this show this price on a landing page, on a location page. And then we had a lot of lessons learned. I would like to cover some lessons, the main ones, like relevance of results for this page, and the problems that we found. We found. As the judgment list extractions, we learned some things about this. The quality of our queries and the distribution of our judgments. So after this bad result, this offline uh, evaluation, we start to question ourselves. What is relevance for our business? Let's recap our use case. We were talking about location page. For us, it's the first point of contact of many visitors. So a pretty serious page. We have very few rank positions to change. It's a premium space there. We have like 10 slots. Business metrics matter. It always matters. But for those pages that we receive paid traffic, revenue matters a lot. And then you use domain experts labeling. We asked them to do a simple, very simple task. We said, OK, uh, for this keyword in this location and this uh, document, uh, are relevant to this. So it's very limited scope. In that scope, the answer is very simple, zero to three. But if you had asked then, this document is a potential conversion. It's mind blowing, it's impossible to know that only in this limited scope. So that's why uh, we should maybe consider, since we want uh, also data, like a data approach. This article here, by Sandu, Sondi, and Zai, uh, had very good arguments uh, ap about apply learning to rank <coughs> for e-commerce. And then it basically uh, tells, uh, tells us like, okay, uh, if you want to measure relevance for e-commerce, uh, let's redefine the, what, is re uh, <coughs> what is relevance for e-commerce. Like uh, uh, rele relevance for e-commerce, not tax, re tax relevance might be relevant, but also something that covers all your conversion funnel. And then it, it suggests you to also, in the concept of measuring the relevance, consider things like, okay, you are a customer, you search, and then in search page, let's say you click in this product. So click-through rate might be an indication of relevance. If you move 
for to pro pro product page, and add to card, this is even more relevant. And if you end up conversion, is it even more relevant? <coughs> there are many challenges here, like mostly like okay, it's different dimensions, like the number of people who click in a document, of course, and then add to card and conversion is very sparse later. But then he raised some good things that we did include. But we can we could also include this and experts can help us to define to define business metrics and refine our judgments. Another thing that we learned it is the quality of queries. We didn't consider the real user query, but the keywords, the search keywords that the search engine matches. Like let's say that the we search engine here is Google. So a customer went uh, went to Google and typed like uh, Eiffel Tower cheap options at night. We didn't get the full thing. We lost some content. We we got what user uh, Google Maps to show our ad. So we got something start of Liberty ticket or skip or skip the line ticket. And another thing that we learned it is this. In the beginning, okay, you will say we have a we have a rich query. We have the locations and the intentions. But we decide to use this in a context of a location page. So this keyword was used for measure the relevance of this keyword in Stat of Liberty page. So of course, all the, the products there are about Stat of Liberty. But you didn't clean up this from the query. So we, we end up scoring the full query. So as a result, we have some many cases when the documents that are more relevant uh, uh, the, the model thinks that the models are more relevant are the models who have best BM25 for this. But not because of the full thing, but because of this. So this is useless for us. We should use only the intention. The distribution of judgments. Something that we've been reading about a lot. For LTR, uh, it's very important that you have, like the People are saying like more negative results. Of course, depending of your business, depending of the model, but in general, it's a guideline. And in the aggregate, aggregated data, you have this distribution of judgments. If you consider here the things that are more relevant and things that are not relevant, you have 48% here and 45% here. So we almost have binary relevance here, not in the middle. It's the aggregated data. But you, if you go through page by page, you can see that this distribution remains. If you consider the dark color, things that are very relevant, and white color, like orange here, not relevant, each page you see this pattern happen. In some pages, we also we have only one example of this, that thing. This is very bad because on location page, the items we have are very similar. So uh, what dif differentiates uh, a document to another sometimes is a little thing, like the, the, the duration. So because they are about the same thing, they are about the location. And our data, the data that you showed the model didn't reflect this. So because we, had, we end up having binary relevance. And uh, in each page, we see the same pattern happen. So this is very bad. It's interesting to know that everything is somehow connected. We had insufficient criteria to judge. It was not the experts or the judge's fault, but our fault to define the task. We said, okay, we are relevant to this document for this query, and only that. And also sent to the experts low diversity queries. We didn't have the what the user actually typed, but the, what they search and matches. So we lost some rich information to, that could help the experts to have a conclusion about the document. And the experts judge everything and end up having these judgments. Like judgments that are not so balanced as I show. And no, no business metrics were considered. Because we didn't ask them to do it. We just asked it in the, the scope of uh, of the relevance, uh, how, how good are the document. And then we send both things to our LTR pipeline. So the judgments and the queries. And queries here had another problem, which is, uh, as I mentioned, we didn't clean up our queries properly. So we sent some location that works as a noise for our scorer. So if both things 
we had a model with some problems. Okay, so yeah, I run. <laughs> so for a future, why do you want to do it? We definitely want to cover all these products. So we want to collect judgments from data, at least to make sure if the experts judgment, or if you manage it to also uh, we we define our criteria to measure relevance and and collect for experts in this case like my some. It might be something interesting, but we are going to try is like, okay, use data. We have to use our data and refine then later with the expert labeling. We could apply LTI and other search features like uh, all the things that have been read is full text search. We didn't go for uh, full text search because we had this need in our location page, but the problem was also more complex. And we want to extract the intentions for the keywords. Like in full text search, in our full text search, you can, we will have a, a basic query understanding model that clean up the location. We didn't apply then before I sent you the model in this view one. So you could do it if you use keywords. And also uh, another message here is to judge the judgments more often. We will not point fingers, but uh, check distribution and like main, ma make a, a lot of good uh, send checks before having your training set because it's the most important part of your maybe your problem your project. So my final message is that we need to keep sailing and we will keep sailing. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Hi, a uh, fairly simple question. Was it worth it? <laughs> After if all the trouble, um, do you um, could finally measure some increase in revenue? Uh, yeah, had increase in revenue. Yeah, good question. No, uh, <laughs> we, did, we, did, we didn't put this model in production, but we had some good learnings. Like in this process of understanding what is bad for our model, we come up with this okay location might not be interesting. So before this project, we try to introduce uh, text metrics in your ranking, but without machine learning. But I never try to extract the intentions. So by learning why the model didn't work, we could identify that could be a reason, and you, you had a A-B test to run and evaluate this impact of your model. Also, it, works in that it was not a, a, like a, a project of like a year. It was like a quarter. It was bad, like a quarter is a lot of time, but <laughs> it could be worse. And then these learnings that you collected, we still have the pipelines working, so Vorvich will be easier. But I know your point, like for the business perspective. Yep. So I understood from your answer now that you didn't put this model to production? No. This particular one, no. Because we, we, we did some offline evaluation in your headquarters. And we, as uh, like with our product manager, analyze some result case that were important for our business, and we come up with the decision that was not good enough for going to production with this model. So what we we did after this, we like we st we the project like we continues, but f so far we not using this model in production. We had, as I said, with the learnings, we we come up with a, a lot of A/B tests that we implemented and improve our ranking, but not with LTR. How long um, do you think it's going to take you guys to uh, finish this and, and actually deliver something to production? No, in terms of uh, uh, technical uh, things to implement, it's nothing. The problem for us that is we struggle with is was the use case. Like you come up with the conclusion that the use case might not be the best one for apply LTR in our business. Like we could have this with another approach maybe try to redefine, as I mentioned, the criteria of what is relevant for us, or try to apply this for other search features, like full text search. Yep. But in terms of technical implementation, we, we don't have logistics problems to, to ship in the model. Thank you very much. Hi, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, I like your conclusion that 
the the task you gave to the expert really mattered in in sort of getting maybe not quite the right results for you. Um, you mentioned that you collected, I think, 30,000 judgments from people. How did you uh, decide which sort of pairs of query and, uh, and um, uh, location item document to even present to people? Did you randomly choose? Did you have a pre-selection? Mm -hmm. And yeah. did that maybe also make a difference in your result? Yeah, we decided to... We extracted those uh, uh, keywords in combination of location that ha had the highest demand from our ad machine, let's say. So we went, this, we went through our data, then you pick those cases that are more important for the business. Like we have many location pages, so we, we know that for sure some affect the business or not. Uh, and then we, had our, uh, we collect all of them, uh, of them and uh, get our head queries, so the queries that are more important for the business. And then for those subset, we have some randomization. But we also, but all the queries that you choose was queries that are relevant for our business. And the documents were also... The documents for the queries were also the relevant documents already, or were they randomly picked documents? Uh, good question. We randomly picked the top 20 documents, I think, no, tw for top 40 documents. And then for it, for, uh, for it uh, expert, we show 20 documents, too. So Um, hi. Um, I was just wondering if you considered maybe, I don't know if it's possible or not, um, to gather the uh, judgments, like, I don't know, automatically from the logs, from click-through rates or something like that? Or if it was too much of a hassle? Because it's always terrible to have manual people, like, sitting there yeah. and, like, please evaluate, evaluate. I don't know. Yeah, we, we in v v1, we didn't. Like, before V2, now we are doing that. We had some approach of, okay, let's go through our data, and then, okay, combine click-through rate and conversion rate. We're doing that right now. And also redefine later, maybe with experts, or maybe with the business rules that matters for this page, and then have a new judgments and throw in our pipeline and have new models. Yeah, we are considering with that for V2. Any other questions? In that case, thank you very much again. Thank you, guys.